right, everyone, and welcome back. Oh, here's another person I'm really excited to see. <laughs> Hi, oh, good. Thank you for joining us today, Billy, with your uh, it's a pleasure. with the webinar talk. I'm really looking forward to someone My who's a little bit skeptical about online shelters. So, <laughs> I hope that will prove me wrong. All right. But actually, I know that there is one person uh, who joined us today who just completed her online shelter last week. So maybe she could share her experience in the chat with us. Oh, really? Yeah. All okay. right. Cool. Right. Um, well, let me introduce Billy, my good friend, Billy. <laughs> Hello. Um, very experienced shelter trainer who traveled the world a lot and well he'll tell you more about himself <laughs> now well at, at least uh, well he knows how to pronounce his last name not nope. a clue <laughs> all right well okay I'm going to disappear now and I'll be back soon wonderful be here if I start screaming Hello everyone, lovely to see you, or not, see your names. All right, super duper. Great to see you all. Um, my name is Billy, as uh, Diana quite rightly said. It's lovely to be here virtually, if nothing else. And it's, it's a privilege to be working with the school, with ILC, this summer on the, the online shelters. Really, really looking forward to it. Lovely to be working with Diana. Um, and uh, yeah, looking forward to it. By the way, this is gonna be a very long, dull monologue. So please feel free to jump in with questions and divert my attention where you can. I'm all ears. Uh, be lovely to hear from you guys. But basically, I just wanted to share my thoughts on what I've learned from from tutoring this new 100% online CELTA um, over the past year or CELTA in the time of COVID. And my name's Billy, as I said to Diana, I can't pronounce my surname, but it's something you like, Hasilji, uh, but, but very nice to see you. A little bit of background then. What is CELTA? I know I'm gonna be preaching to the converted here, but CELTA is the world's most widely recognized English teaching qualification. If you've never taught before, then this is the place to start. And if you already teach, this will help you become a better teacher. But as I say, I'm sure you know all of this, uh, but I'm really setting the scene because back in 2008, I knew absolutely nothing about this course. Back then, I was a, a graphic designer and my life up until that point was pretty much me sitting in my pyjamas at home in front of a laptop. Um, and it was fun, I enjoyed the work, but to be honest, I didn't feel like I was making much of an impact on the world. Uh, here's a few websites and a few logos here and there, but really nothing that was going to outlive me, if you know what I mean. And I was a little bit lost to say the least. And it was my mum actually, who just sent me on my way, go and do a shelter, she said. And I had absolutely no idea what one was, but I signed up to the cheapest one I could find with easy reach to my home. And well, here we are a month later, there's me graduating. And well, I was absolutely smitten. I absolutely loved it. And I remember actually, my first lesson was a vocabulary lesson, uh, as luck would have it. And I sat down after my lesson, I sat at the back and I watched the lessons go on. And I thought, do you know what? If one of those students has learned one thing as a result of what I've just done, then their world has kind of broadened in some way. And so that was it, I was hooked. I, was, I knew I was always gonna be a teacher. And beyond that, I knew I wanted to become a self tutor as quickly as possible. So from there, I set off to Turkey and I taught young learners for a while in a private school for about three, four years. And then after that, I moved to a private language school. 
and I worked my way up to director of studies. And after doing some time there and kind of gaining my experience, the only thing that was standing between me and becoming a CELTA tutor was the dreaded Delta. And so I took myself off to Poland to, to face that challenge. And uh, guess what? Little did I know there were two extremely talented teachers on that course. And uh, here they are. Yes, it's uh, Diana and, and Julie there, my good old Delta buddies. So after the Delta was over, it was back to Turkey and I finally got the chance to tutor on my first course. And there's me with my first uh, bunch of victims uh, and a dream fulfilled, really. Now, other tutors have said to me kind of along the road, like, don't do too many courses. You're going to burn out. You're going to kind of fall out of love with the CELTA, get fed up with it. Well, here we are, eight years and I think 53 courses, I think it is now later. And I'm, I'm yeah, it's just still loving it totally. And uh, anyone who's, who's any good at maths will be able to work out that 53 into eight isn't too many toilet breaks. Um, but I feel that like helping people through their CELTA journey really is, is my calling. And uh, yeah, I'm honored that life has, has given me the opportunity. Right, so back to Cambridge then. And what is, well, what is really I love about the CELTA, I suppose, in a nutshell, it's the, it's all of this, it's the craziness, it's the madness and the friendships and the, the pain and the joy. Anyone who's done a CELTA will appreciate the pain and the sleepless nights, maybe not appreciate, but uh, will understand the sense of achievement and perhaps the new beginnings that CELTA brings. And that's what it is that I love so dearly about it. Back in the day then, what Cambridge was offering, and up until last year anyway, was, was two options, really. There was the original taste, CELTA, if you like, and that was face-to-face -face input. And input, for those who don't know, is when the tutors teach the trainees, the candidates, or whatever you want to call them. And then there's face-to-face -face teaching practice. So, and that's where the trainees, the, the, the teachers teach the, the students. There was also this other offering, which was the online CELTA, but it was kind of a misnomer. It wasn't really an online course. It was more of a blended offering. So the, the input was online, so through the Cambridge Moodle, and then the teaching practice was face-to-face. -face. Now, I got quite excited, to be honest, when I saw the online offering and I, I decided to go back and, and do some extra training and, and become an OCT, an online course tutor. And uh, I was qualified. Thing is, I never actually did an online course. Why? Well, I was kind of enjoying the face-to-face -face courses that much. And I thought, well, I'm not gonna be able to see that or experience that in an online environment. But then it happened. and COVID came along. And I, at the time, I was heading back uh, from a year in Oman, where I'd just been setting up a, a CELTA center uh, for a school over there. And I was heading back to Turkey, and I was supposed to be doing a face-to-face -face course up at ITI in Istanbul. But COVID came, as we are all aware, Turkey closed and the course was canceled. For a little period after that, centres were kind of reeling, really, and tutors were flapping around. And, uh, well, Cambridge kind of laid low for a while. And I suppose we just, all we could do really was wait to find out what was going to happen. After about a month, I think it was, Cambridge gave the go-ahead for this uh, new course. So most of the courses that were running face-to-face -face components were kind of cancelled. and then they had no choice but to go fully online. So we had this all 100% online uh, CELTA, and the idea was pretty simple. Online input through Zoom or Moodle or whatever, and then online teaching practice through Zoom or whatever. And as Dan, uh, Diana just quite rightly said, and for myself and that army of other tutors, we were 
not liking this proposition very much. And uh, well, for all the reasons I mentioned above and many more. So let's just go through some of my, my fears of the online. I suppose initially my fear was because Cambridge had put this in as a kind of stopgap and it was only a, like a temporary measure. But I felt bad for the, the poor graduates of the 100% online course that what are they going to do when COVID's over in a few months and we go back to face to face, how are they going to gain that experience? Um, but well, we'll come to that in a moment. The other thing was the CELTA criteria and how that was going to translate to the online world. I, I, I wasn't clear about that. What about input? I, I designed all these lovely lessons and how was I going to translate that then to Zoom? And also, by the way, what the, is Zoom anyway? And how do I make it work? And what if there's a connection issue? And what if my connection goes, teachers' connection goes, students' connections go? What do we do about that? And hello, what about my comfort zone? Because this course is sitting well outside of that. And uh, who's going to pay for that? And well, what did I do? Well, I wouldn't be here. Otherwise, I had no choice. As soon as Cambridge gave the go ahead, I got a call from Singapore and I, I joined their first online course. So I set my alarm for, I think it was 2 a.m. Uh, to sync up with Singapore time. And I started my 100% online course for the first time. And I actually really enjoyed it. And I was pleasantly surprised, as you can see in the, in the photo. Um, actually, there was loads of things uh, that, were, that were really nice about the course and actually some things that I thought worked a little better. Now, I'll talk about methodology a little bit later, but I just want to focus for the moment on the kind of day-to-day -day running of the course and what I really liked about it. The first thing I want to talk about is the, the teaching practice students and the teaching practice students are the living and breathing uh, students, the guinea pigs, if you like, that the, the trainee teachers teach on, <laughs> teach to. Uh, now, ordinarily, they're recruited from the local area and they come into school, they pay their deposit, and they turn up for a month or whatever. Great. But what we found, certainly outside of um, English speaking environments, anyway, from the face to face courses, that they usually are monolingual groups. So, uh, a CELTA you take in Turkey, it's usually Turkish students you practice on. If you're in Oman, it's usually Omanis, et cetera. You get the idea. So, there could be an issue of L1 creeping in and like limited cultural reference and, and stuff like that. Also, the fact that they have to come into the centre could mean that they may not come into the centre, therefore numbers may dwindle. It depends on the, the deposit that they take, that the schools take, and how rich the TP students are, basically. But yeah, this could be an issue. But what I've seen from the online courses, certainly, is that there's this wonderful mix of nationalities and cultures. In the Singapore courses, uh, that I've, I've been involved in. We've had Indonesian, Malay, Chinese, Sri Lankan, Indian, Burmese, and other nationalities all in a single classroom, which is just awesome. There's no more issues of L1 and fantastically interesting discussions going on. The, the course we did in Oman recently, we had Ukrainian, German, Kyrgyz, uh, Belarusian, Hungarian, Omani, awesome, absolutely fantastic. A lovely mix of learners to practice on. The other amazing thing is that they're at home. They're on their phones or their laptops. They're signing in from villages. So they, they kind of tend to turn up to lessons. And it was a, a couple of weeks ago, there was one of the TP students was ill and she just joined the lesson from her bed, you know, duvet and everything. It was awesome. And she turned up. So we now have the chance to reach and give English lessons to all these remote areas, which is great. And I think it's one way in which, I hate to say it, but COVID and the online CELTA has actually changed the world for the better. Uh, just kind of piggybacking off that, I, I created this Facebook group for TP students to kind of pool students from around the world. And as you can see, we've got already over uh, 1.4 uh, thousand members in the group. 
which is just terrific. So imagine you've got learners all levels all over the world and they now have access to centers all over the world, which is terrific. And you could be sitting here in a village in Turkey and taking lessons in Peru, all right? And the self centers and the candidates have this kind of unlimited source of practice students. Absolutely beautiful. The other thing about the online course is the, the course participants, candidates, teachers, whatever you want to call them, the punters, the paying people, you guys, now they're not tied to, to geography anymore. You can take a shelter anywhere you want from your armchair and suddenly we're getting the chance to teach or to have candidates uh, from countries who never had access to the CELTA before for whatever reason. Now, I'm sure you're aware that the, the CELTA is not a, a cheap undertaking by any stretch and the costs of flights and accommodation may well just push it into the, the impossible. So losing them is not a bad thing and we, we, we've got people uh, joining from home. Also, you know, just training a lovely group of, of nationalities is lovely as well. So the, the group in Oman recently, we had Omani, Germany, uh, Dubai, Zanzibar, all dialing in from home is one of the um, brilliant mix of, of people. And I think that really enriches the CELTA journey as well. Okay, so back to those other fears I had, looking back at the criteria. Um, well, I suppose, I mean, very quickly into that first course, actually, I, I realized that rather than these kind of insurmountable differences that the courses had, it was actually how similar they were. And the criteria just kind of slotted into place without much need for interpretation. It was pretty smooth. Uh, for example, I mean, take um, classroom management, for example. And I thought initially, OK, this can be a tricky one. Like, How do we? talk about the physical environment, et cetera. But on a face-to-face -face course, you'd expect teachers to be prepared, have the pens, have the board markers, have the, the computer set up, have everything, the audio ready to go and all the rest of it. Well, it just translates nicely into the online environment as well. So have they, have they become the host of the meeting? Have they uh, rang breakout rooms if they want to? And do they know where everyone is and everything is? And have they got their audio organized? So it, it translates quite smoothly. There, there were a couple of uh, silly differences. Uh, I've got some feedback from a face-to-face -face course uh, I was on recently. So this is a kind of a classic. There was a lot of noise coming in from the street. Consider closing the window when the learners are reading. All right, pretty basic classroom management. And uh, one from an online course, and this was from Singapore. So a lot of the learners were coming in from kind of rural Indonesia. Um, that chicken was a bit loud. Consider muting that particular learner when everyone is reading. So you get the idea. The, the actual concept is pretty much the same. Uh, you just translate it. It's fine. What about monitoring? And monitoring for those uh, who may need reminding is the, uh, the idea of the teacher observing and listening to what the learners are, are doing while they're on the task. Well, as with the face-to-face -face course, the, the teacher really needs to create those opportunities as much as possible uh, so that they can get in and see and hear what the learners are doing. And this comes down to designing tasks and setting up group and pair work and all the rest of it so that you allow yourself to get around. It's totally possible online. I thought at first it wasn't. It's totally possible online. And the challenges, in fact, are very, very similar. There are some differences. The face to face classroom allows you to kind of scan, you know, scan the room at a glance where you can't really do that online. But there's other things that work really well. So like um, writing, for example, you can set up Google Docs and have writing emerge before your very eyes, which is lovely. Um, so some things are actually better, dare I say it. Group works another one. Uh, as with face to face, obviously, the more learners are talking to each other, the more opportunities they have uh, to develop their language. Online, you can do pretty much the same. You can put learners together, you can group, you can regroup. You don't have to move chairs around, which is quite handy. Or you can back out of the, the session altogether and turn your camera off and let them get on with it. So there's lots of opportunities online as well for group work and pair work. 
Task design and materials, well, yeah, I've seen over the past few courses, I've seen materials uh, adapted from course books beautifully to the online environment, not a problem at all. And as for other materials, well, the, the internet is your oyster, really. You've got, um, you've got uh, an internet full of apps and uh, active activities and, and websites at your disposal, as we, we, we saw there uh, from Anna. Or you can keep it simple with a PPT and a smile. I like so much in the face-to-face -face classroom, often less is more, the same applies online, uh, not a problem. Now, in terms of criteria, that's pretty much it, I suppose. Uh, Cambridge have said in their last webinar, they said that they will be releasing a new handbook, and I assume there'll be changes to criteria. But to be honest, I don't expect anything major. It will be terminology, if that. It will be uh, nothing significant. What about all that lovely uh, input? Well, actually, as it turned out, it was an utter breeze getting it online not a problem at all and actually some of the activities work better online so yeah it was no it was, it was more just kind of cutting it down and cutting to the chase more as you know time goes a little bit slower online so yes uh, but not a problem oh this new normal they talk of i know people are getting kind of sick of this but the on as i said before the online course was really meant to be this temporary measure it was meant to be a stopgap and Initially, they said it was going to be up until July 2020, um, just to see us through COVID, right? And then, well, a pandemic was delayed and it went on. And so it was pushed back then, the online course was pushed back to, we could use it until December and then pandemic. And so it's now a permanent fixture. And I look back at those days and I kind of reflect on the fears that I had of this course, the unknown. And, you know, as, as the time went on and these courses ran and I tutored them and whatnot, I kind of realized that I'd been looking at it all wrong, really. And this new normality was taking hold. And actually, it was very clear that it, the world was never going to be the same and teaching was never going to be the same. So not only has online teaching become the norm, but there's just been way too many gains from this 100% online itself, I think, for it to ever uh, disappear. Those who train up on the 100% online CELTA courses now, well, they've got experience of teaching online. So the question is not how will those online graduates ever gain experience face to face, but how will those who graduated from the face-to-face -face ever gain online experience? And, and likewise, as more and more centres take their classes online, it's those with online experience who are sought out rather than being at a disadvantage. Um, and yeah, no, who knows? Taking the online CELTA may well just give you the edge. Now, please don't get me wrong. I love the face-to-face -face cell. I always will, always have. And as soon as I can get back to a face-to-face -face cell, I will be charging back there. But I won't ever do it exclusively anymore. I will always teach the online course. It's not all roses, though. There are a few things that I have to admit that I don't like about the course. As I said before you do you're going to have to sit in front of your computer for extended periods of time and perhaps it is taking you back to those graphic design days um, too much but uh, it can be tiring. yes it can be and you will need to keep active outside of course hours <laughs> outside of course hours. Uh, this is important uh, because you need to find that balance uh, and obviously stay healthy Anyone who's taken a CELTA online, offline or whatever will know that CELTA takes no prisoners. So, uh, yeah, you've got to find those opportunities. Uh, one of my recent graduates, actually, she got through the course by using one of those standing desks, um, which seemed to work for her uh, on your feet the entire time. Not for me, but worked for her fine. Um, 
the fact that you don't need to travel into the center or spend an hour on the bus is a potential benefit of the online course when sleep becomes the most valuable commodity on a CELTA course. You know, a quick shower and you just, you're there is, is uh, pretty priceless. The other thing I miss um, is the end of course parties. I miss that. I miss the food uh, a lot. But then, I mean, looking back at those photos, you probably could see I was uh, probably a little bit too fond of cake anyway, so no bad thing. Um, but I think most importantly about this online course, and you know, there is, there's no doubt that as we're all traipsing through this pandemic and this idea of social distancing it is affecting our relationships with everyone we encounter. And so, you know, you're not going to connect on the same level as with a face to face course with your with your learners. It's just it's just impossible. Um, and there is a, a certain awkwardness to Zoom as we're we've all experienced at uh, the end of a zoom session there's that uh, rather awkwardness and it, it carries through into the lessons but it is what it is and i i miss i miss the monkeying around in the classroom to be perfectly honest as a teacher but then reducing my teacher presence was probably a, a was well, was a massive action point anyway so um no bad thing and i just have to find ways of monkeying around on zoom instead Is this course for you then? Uh, well, you need to be honest with yourself. Uh, is, if you think you're going to be doing face to face teaching predominantly after the course, if you can get into the center, go for the face to face course. Great. Uh, but looking at the way the world is going, learning to teach online might not be such a bad thing anyway. Uh, only yes, actually, one of my uh, one of my recent graduates said, uh, Billy, where can I go in the world to get the best salaries teach? And I'm, I was, <laughs> where are you gonna go? I mean, here, right now in Turkey, we're on a, like a proper curfew, so we can't leave the house. So forget going to Dubai to rake in the money. I can't go to the supermarket. So you have to face the reality and say, okay, where are the opportunities right now? Follow them maybe. So if you decide to go for it, the online course, what I reckon you need. A good, inter I know I've just jinxed this, and I'm probably gonna lose my internet connection now, but anyway, a, a good in internet connection is, is a must. Uh, you need a nice solid internet connection because you're gonna be teaching and you're gonna be observing. And when you're not teaching, you're gonna be watching out your peers, you're gonna be completing tasks. And uh, yeah, it, it's crucial uh, that you have as few interruptions as possible. You'll need a computer, obviously, um, and a webcam and a microphone. It's not a course that you could consider taking on your phone. Uh, you'll be spending large chunks of the day online and on Zoom. You'll be writing assignments and lesson plans and all that beautiful stuff. You, you need a laptop. Basic technology, copying and pasting and all the rest of it and knowing how to browse the internet and whatnot, that's, that's kind of yeah taken as red and uh ms office would be good there are alternatives but to be honest i think this is, is kind of standard um peace and quiet would be good as few chickens as possible we had an assessment this morning and i couldn't hear the assessor because of the dog so yeah just as uh, as few interruptions as possible how does the center then support you how does the how do the tutors support you through the course well, with any CELTA you take, there will be guided lesson planning, so you will be supported through that process. The tutors will have online experience and they will support you in making the right decisions for creating your lessons. Again, another CELTA standard is personalized tutor and peer feedback. So you will be getting information from your tutors. You'll be getting a response from your tutors and your peers on how you can continually develop from one lesson to the next. For online courses specifically, there'll be extra support with Zoom. So you will be 
guided through the technologies needed so that ceases to be uh, a barrier for you and also some good news that, that Cambridge has also factors in some uh, buffer time into the TTs, so the teaching practices, so you have time for any technical hitches that may occur. I mean, in terms of cell fundamentals across the board, it's the same thing. You've got the 120 hours and whatever's left in the day to plan and to write assignments and whatnot. There's still t uh, six hours of teaching practice. There are still four assignments and there's still input so the tutors will still be teaching you in the method this idea of loop input so the teachers the tutors will be teaching you in the way they hope that you will teach your learners um, so yes there's some models there all the way through the course do you know what the the issues are, are also the same i found between the face-to-face -face and the online courses so um whoop, hello come back uh so yeah things like um well, dealing with handouts, clarifying language, developing productive and receptive skills, grouping learners, classroom management, error correction, lesson planning, assignment writing, and sleepless nights. Exactly the same across the two courses, uh, no major differences. And the results I found to be similar to, uh, so I've, got, I've taught a fair few courses now since it all started, and I've seen candidates pass, I've seen them get B's, I've seen them get A's, and I've seen them get those grades at the similar rate uh, to face-to-face -face courses. As if we could predict, we shall try. The future of South, well, the immediate future, let's say, Cambridge has announced, as I said recently, that the 100% online CELTA is here to stay. And it will be one of three delivery methods. There's the original one that we talked about earlier, so face-to-face -face input, face-to-face -face teaching practice. There's the one we've just been speaking about, the 100% online CELTA, so that's online input, online teaching practice. And this new one with the blended CELTA, so there's face-to-face -face and online input and face-to-face -face and online teaching practice. They All they've said about that one is that it has to be done over an, a, an extended period of time to allow for transitions and whatnot. But what is important, I think, is that Cambridge has made it super clear that the CELTA is the CELTA and no matter what format you choose, the certificate you get will be exactly the same. And this is a powerful message from Cambridge and it kind of reinforces what I've, what I've known and had kind of drilled into me over the past year. If I look back at my self journey and when I left self to, for myself and I, I took my first job in Turkey teaching those young learners, you know, did CELTA provide me with the experience of teaching young learners? No, absolutely not. But I learned how to adapt my knowledge on the job. And CELTA had provided me with this framework that I could then apply to all teaching contexts I found myself in. There's this input session that many CELTAs have uh, around the world, and it's a, it's a session called Teaching with Technology. Now, personally, I'm not a big fan of it. Why? Because I find it a little bit context specific. And, you know, I've worked in schools with blackboards, I've worked in schools with white boards. Uh, I've worked in schools with green boards, interactive white boards, no white boards, projectors, no projectors, overhead projectors. Why is that? Why is it that we can adapt so quickly? I, I feel that CELTA is really about two people. It's about the teacher and the learner. And the fundamental methodology is the same, regardless of the technology, you should be able to teach with minimal adjustment through any medium. The approaches of teaching vocabulary, grammar, speaking, reading, listening and writing are, cons are constant and consistent and unshaken. 
uh, so I feel that CELTA is so much bigger than its mode of delivery. I, and you know, I think we've kind of blown it out of proportion a little bit. And it's, it's not really an issue, it's kind of a non-issue. And I don't care anymore whether my graduates from the online courses can teach face-to-face -face or whether my graduates from the face-to-face -face can teach online anymore. Any CELTA graduate should be able to walk into any classroom and deliver a sound, effective, engaging, communicative lesson. Online, face-to-face, -face, projector, no projector, Singapore, Calcutta, London, or Kiev. Uh, it's, it's just another classroom. And I'll leave you uh, with a quote from one of my, um, well, one of my candidates who's graduating next week, um, which I thought was rather nice. Um, but thank you for listening to me. And uh, I'm, open to questions and uh there's other wonderful tutors there help me out that'd be great who was it who took the online It's a pleasure, Victoria. Victoria, I think you did have a question. Um, you're planning, okay. You're welcome, Natalia. Actually, Victoria, there was a question I think you had way back um, and I wanted to come back to that in a moment, if that's possible. Diana, have I have I swayed you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it again. You know, do it, do it, do it. The thing is, I, I think uh, you know. Well, yes, Bill, you have. You know, after this talk, I really kind of. You know, I I do feel determined to well. Have done Do it, it. one CELTA course online by the end of this year. Um, well, the problem is I'm in the building, you know, so I basically live in the office. <laughs> <laughs> it would be difficult for me to find a room to use for CELTA online, given the fact that we'd be running our well, normal CELTA. Sorry. <laughs> all right, all jokes aside. Um, this is the new normal. Yes, exactly. And uh, that's why I'm feeling that I'm going to, I don't know, almost miss the boat. You know? Get on the boat with us, Diana. Yeah, Get on the boat. have a go. <laughs> it's um, super fine. Um, all right. So there are some comments in the chat there. So. There was a, the question I was referring to, I think, I think it was Victoria, it was just after your session, Dan, I think it was during the break. Yeah, am I right, Victoria? You had a question about how to encourage, I, going off my topic totally, but uh, an interesting question, I thought, nonetheless, was uh, how to encourage less motivated students, was it? Is that right, Victoria? Yeah. Oh, I missed that one. Yeah. Well, I thought, you know, I could do self tutor style and... Uh, answer a question with a question and uh and say well we we saw you know up until mine like up until mine uh we saw three fantastic presentations and, and there was there were some ideas there that i think you can uh draw out on on how to motivate learners i, I certainly had some some ideas jotted down um and yeah perhaps uh, the rest of the attendees might want to offer suggestions of things that they they uh, picked up along the way of the three sessions we saw um, up until mine. You know, I'm going to be the devil's advocate here because some time ago, actually, I had a webinar on uh, supporting learning and that um, dealt with uh, motivation quite a lot. 
And one of the arguments there was that, well, actually, you know, of course, we have this pressure on us as teachers, you know, to work our magic and motivate people, mm. right? So do something, you have this trick or some magic pill or something to give them and they're like, yay, we'll be bursting, bursting with enthusiasm, you know? But the thing is, I believe that confident, professional teaching combined with respect and interesting tasks will give them that motivation if they need to learn the language of course you cannot look at that horse right <laughs> there's no point in that you know if they don't need the language they won't get it mm -hmm. but creating the functional atmosphere in the classroom you know will help you do that and will help your learners feel safe confident secure and interested in learning and, and this is what I think CELTA is all about, actually. It's about helping the teachers to become more efficient and uh, more confident as well for their teaching, you know, and that translates and that makes their classes better and the learning that they give their students more mm -hmm. meaningful. Um, this is the motivation, in my opinion. Absolutely. And the extension of that is what you were saying about feedback as well, because if it works for the teacher, it's going to work for the student. If the teacher is confident and you can boost the confidence of the learner as well. So if you're, as you were saying in, in your session on, on feedback, acknowledging those areas that are praiseworthy, especially in those perhaps less motivated or um, less confident learners, uh, drawing them in and, and praising uh, good examples of their language may well uh, motivate. And what, what motivates you? Look at anything in your in your life, and you know a bit of praise goes a long way. Right? I think it's, uh... There's a delicate chemistry um, motivation is um, between the teacher and the student. Ultimately, what we do in the classroom is um, we ensure conditions for learning and we ensure conditions of learning in a positive atmosphere. And the conditions for learning are simple: students learn by doing tasks. Um, students learn by doing tasks collaboratively and students learn by doing meaningful, purposeful, communicative tasks collaboratively. That's all there is to it. That's the magic of it. Of course, it's, it's, it's as I said, it's a chemistry because um, you do have to respond to the student needs and you do have to adapt to, to the student's needs. Um, but you also have to have to train the, the student to see the relevance of what you're doing, especially if they come from a background of uh, different learning styles, um, different teaching styles, let's say, not, not learning styles. Um, and that's what, that's what motivation is. Is that mine? Or is that Julie? Yeah, yeah I think it, that's Julie. Yes, but it's thing, for a workshop. Yes. Oh, is she back? Oh, sorry, my. Hello. <laughs> Hello, I'm back. So yeah, that was saying it's it's what we've done. It was a it was a good point. It's what we've done today with um with uh, you guys with the attendees is just making you think, um, giving you tasks. And if this were a workshop, you know, we put you in the breakout rooms, um, and you get to share ideas with one another, and that's motivating and that's interesting, and it would make you come back. I wanted to ask you guys about the online self, and this is something that um. I was actually, I had a webinar uh, yesterday on CELTA and the possible, well, the available formats and stuff. And one of the questions uh, I was asked during that session was, which, so, uh, which CELTA, online or offline, do the employers prefer now? You know, because I used, I'm used to getting the question, is the certificate the same? You know, I know the answer to that one, yes, it is. You know, but that got me thinking, you know, and well, yeah, so I'll, uh, I'll leave it to you to answer. What do you think? <laughs> mean hex is it? Sorry, Diana, we lost you. Ah, okay, so the I question did. is, uh, which CELTA do you think the employers want their employees to have? The online or the offline? How about that one, huh? Um, I think that's an, that's that's something inevitable. There's a inevitability here because if you've done your CELTA in 2020 or 2021, you most likely have done it online. So 
that's what there is. Um, I've, I've mean, I've been training um, on the online CELTA from basically April of last year. So when it happened, uh, we immediately switched to fully online. Um, and so, you know, I've trained hundreds of, um, of um, teachers by now, um, teachers who have gotten jobs. Um, and who had no problems and the employers were just, oh, I just want a CELTA certificate. Because it doesn't say on the CELTA certificate, Billy, I think, mentioned earlier, it doesn't say that you've done it online or that you've done it face to face. Um, it just says the date. And if they see the date in 2020, obviously it's going to be, um, it's going to be well, online. Not all of them. Uh, not all of them, but, you know, um, that's the initial assumption. But so far, we haven't seen any negative reactions from the employers um in respect to the the online or offline um i think it's it's um what billy was saying earlier that it's uh it's we're making this a bigger deal than it actually is the celta is the celta cambridge has said that the celta is the celta no matter how you do it the mode of delivery is really um it's a secondary consideration and you are not we're not compromising on, on anything the same skills that apply in um face to face um apply in an online format the same problems that you have in face to face you have in an online format you know in a face to face course before your lesson, you'd be running around, printers wouldn't work, there are no handouts. It's the same thing here. Somebody doesn't get the handout, uh, screen share doesn't work. It's the same problems in a different style. So, um, so far, just to, to summarize, uh, personally, in, in my area of the world, we haven't seen any negative uh, responses from employers. And ultimately, they can't really, can they? If, if yeah. the requirement is a CELTA, I got a CELTA, it yeah. is... The only place that I think Cambridge is stipulating that it has to be mentioned is on the course report, which it's it's up to you. That's not the important bit. The important bit is the, the CELTA certificate, right? Yeah. So not many employers will ask for the report, by the way. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And it depends what you're going for. Now, at the moment, I, I do need teachers who know how to teach online. Yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. the new norm. It's exactly. Teaching doesn't change. That's that's my firm stance on everything. Whether it's online or whether it's face to face, teaching effective teaching doesn't change. The mode of delivery is 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 not important. Um, well, it's less important. I don't want to be you know in in the in the extreme. Well, be, well our students still have preferences. So that's yeah, we still have preferences, and we still have. Yeah, we still have to um, have to respect that. But I think that um, one of the things that I tell my teachers is that we are in this situation. There are some teachers who do not have some schools where there's no choice. Um, uh, you can't go back to 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 face to face. Not at the uh, not at the moment. And we not only have to make do, but we have to make this work. And we have been making it work. And there are success stories and there are ways of, of engaging students, whether they're young learners or adults or things like that. Complaining about a situation isn't going to solve it. So, you know, there's no, there's no other, if, obviously, like if there were an option between online and face-to-face, -face, obviously most of us would choose face-to-face. Uh, -face. Though I have to say it's, there are, there are assets, there are advantages to, um, to teaching online. Um, and to training online, but um, it does, it can work. Um, and there are, okay, a million stories um, of how online teaching doesn't work or online learning doesn't work, but there are also a million stories of how it does work and how students are happy and they progress and we see, um, we see, we see progress and we see interaction and we see people coming in from different places um, in different parts of the world that wouldn't otherwise never have met. You'd have, you'd be dealing only with monolingual classes and online environments, you have the ability to teach uh, multilingual classes. Um, so ultimately it's, 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 there's a balance there. To be fair, uh, I'm pretty sure that there are Millions of stories about how off, offline teaching doesn't work. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just talking about that. Exactly, exactly. You know, we have the, so, uh, the you know, the kind of the, well, something new, something strange. Yeah. Well, the yeah. other thing is because a lot of the tutors are coming from face-to-face -face courses, that 
we're constantly referencing what we would do face to face. So there's almost a kind of a double input going on. Whereas yes. on a face to face course, it's less likely that you would be constantly referencing how you would do it online, right? Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's, you're kind of prepping them as well for, for a face to face environment. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know about you, Julie, but it, it didn't take me a long time to, to change my like, input sessions and whatnot to, no. to like, get the online thing. No, not at all. I'm like fish to water. I, 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 I'm so good. I'm sure that Julie was fine with that one. You know, the moment it started, she was like, yeah. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> Lead in the charge. <laughs> like, come along now. <laughs> Let me show you how it's done. <laughs> um, yeah, no, but cool. ultimately, from, from, a, from a developmental point of view, um, and guys, attendees, think of yourselves as, uh, you know, some of you are, probably most of you are, are already teachers. For me, as a trainer, the online CELTA was a developmental opportunity because when when you're where I am now, I'm a CELTA and Delta trainer, there are not many other avenues that I can further take, right? So I can do more CELTAs or I can do more Deltas, but basically I've kind of hit my, my plateau. But when this online um, uh, training opportunities came up, it was so exhilarating. Um, just you know, converting your your PowerPoints that you would use in face to face into something that you would do online, um, using more Google Docs, uh, changing your materials so they're they're just more streamlined, um, building more flexibility to account for the fact that there is a timing difference. Uh, between face-to-face -face or online because of network connections and whatnot. All of these have been so good for me as, as a trainer as, and as a teacher. Um, it just gave me a new set of skills, right, that I would not have otherwise um, gone for. It's very, like, it's very unlikely that had the pandemic not arrived, I would have, you know, okay, I'm going to do some online training or online teaching other than webinars or, or things like that. So it definitely gave me a new set of skills. And I think that's, that's also a selling point is that, you know, this is the new norm and you have the opportunity to develop a new set of skills um, and, you know, developing on two fronts at the same time. Doing the online CELTA is going to make you a better face-to-face -face teacher if you have the chance to go back to the classroom. And it is going to make you um, a better online teacher if this is um, what you need to, what, what you have to do. Yeah, I go along with that. Yes, I can feel it coming. <laughs> The online CELTA, my way. <laughs> <laughs> no, and exactly, this is exactly the reason why I, I understand that. Well, probably I don't feel that comfortable, but the development starts out of your comfort zone. That's exactly. That's exactly. Point. Yes. So, and yes. And Finally, we felt like we felt like the teachers were like, you know, like our trainees going like, oh my God, what? I have to make them talk to each other? Yay! <laughs> I have to open breakout rooms? Oh no, how do I do that? <laughs> Um, so it's definitely for me personally, um, as, as a teacher and a trainer, it's been a wonderful developmental opportunity and just a wonderful opportunity to work in different places and meet new people um, that I would not have otherwise had the chance to do it. I do miss the traveling though. Yeah. I miss Kiev. So <laughs> I, I, I still hope to see you back here very yep, soon. Yep. Yep. Very soon. Yeah. Counting the months. <laughs> Right, so um, are there any questions that people would like to ask us before we call it? Is anyone still scared of the online? <laughs> nah, not if you do it with us. Nah. We're all in the same boat. All right. Well, Diana's not, but... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll be there. Just paddling so. along. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, um, once again, thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, this is one change to those people who attended the webinar. And thank you so much, guys. Fantastic trainers. And uh, well, please keep in touch, all of you. Those people who don't know how to get in touch with me. Yep. Well, they Always. know where to find the school, you know, and uh, again, just uh, write to us and we'll be happy to answer your questions if you have any. And well, stay with us. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, Thank you. It's been great. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye.